Hi YouTube, it's Catherine Michelle and I'm being joined today with William Rail and um, of about a week or so ago he did a presentation with Greg Fernandez Jr. on forensic mycology um, and during our conversation at that time we had a, a larger panel with a lot of people discussing a lot of topics and it kind of felt like this forensic mycology topic got kind of lost in the shuffle of things and I really think that this is pretty interesting and very important. So here we go. I'm going to let um, William just kind of take over and explain to you what he found and what it means for the case. Hi, William. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, so forensic mycology is um, it's, it's one of those forensic tools that I feel is really, really underused. And especially after we did find <clears throat> in the autopsy reports that there was uh, either mold-like or just full-on mold um, that was found on the bodies. Uh, primarily inside is what, uh, what they were talking about. It's where that's the only area we actually got to see uh, that they were talking about, rather. Unless you got to see the bodies, of course. But, <laughs> um, but it's one of those things, if there's mold, you can start to get a rough estimate, a pretty, pretty rough estimate. It's pretty close to what uh, the time of death would be. Uh, you can also take a look at things like where the person was killed at or where they died. Um, you know, if they had any kind of hallucinogenics or if they're poisoned, you can go and see those things as well. Um, you're going to be able to see a lot of data just from that alone. Um, there's more to uh, to it that I'm still looking into, but things like, you know, when it comes to stomach contents, um, is there a possibility that could go and something in the stomach also playing a factor with this later? But I, I'm still learning about that. Um, but the question is, is it really noteworthy to this case? I think it is. Um, and the reason being is because, well, what I've got on the screen right here, it can play a role in the determination of the time of death, burial place, and time of leaving the body where it was found and caused the death. Uh, forensic mycology is considered an auxiliary method in the determination of the time of death, just like forensic entomology. So while well, we know there was no entomology that was really done at the scene anyways, because, well, they couldn't. It was too cold. Um, so mold can grow at really, really low temperatures, um, and it can also thrive in other temperatures as well. But it's going to be a lot easier in some cases to actually go and find some things off this than you would off of entomology. But once again, that's when entomology isn't going to be there, of course. But um, no, And until you actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I told you before this, I wouldn't interrupt you, and here I go. Um, but before you actually mention this, I had no, you know, I shouldn't say I didn't have any idea, but I never paid attention to the fact that um, mycology could be used, you know, right along with other forms of, of um, determination and time and of death. That That is actually really interesting. Right, right. And it's one of those things, like, I, until I had spotted the mold, I wanted to go and look into the mold. What could it be? And I started stumbling into basically the rabbit hole of, well, I'm going to have to learn about mycology. So I went ahead and I just... Uh, did a couple of weeks of uh, research on it and discovered, okay, sure enough, this is uh, this is really, really valid, mm -hmm. especially considering the temperature in the household. Um, it was it would have been roughly around 68 degrees the whole time. It mm -hmm. would have shifted a little bit, you know, uh, whether it be down or up, uh, depending on where you know where you're at in the house. But that there's a lot of different factors that degrees going to go and um, play in the case, and I think that the door being open was done on purpose. Um, I don't think this is, is, I mean, I know that we spoke, um, when we spoke on Greg's podcast, um, you know, I know Jamie had mentioned something about, you know, well, if a dog, you know, if the door was open, they really wanted to get out, they could just go and push open. Well, it depends on the, it strictly depends on the condition of the door. You know, if that door is really all that heavy, is there's, like, like I said on that last podcast, my own balcony door, I have trouble opening. I'm a big guy. I can I can easily, you know, normally just do something like that, no problem, but I could barely move it. You know, so I know for a fact a little beagle is not going to open that door. We don't know the condition of the door. So well, and a quarter by an inch is not very wide. Right. So it might have been kind of hard for him to get his little claws in there and and then push it. I mean it's not like us. We can we have this this ability to push things this way. I'm not sure a dog, you know, 
Yeah, they're they're not going to really have that uh, that kind of leverage to really handle it. Thank you, leverage. That's the word. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, but the thing is, when I looked at a bunch of these reports, I just really just wanted to point this out. That's what this is. This slide here is is just showing it's it's relative to um, finding determining time of death. All of these reports spoke about being able to determine the time of death. Um, you got the other one I got right here, the fungal microbiota. I'm not going to say the whole thing, but fungal microbiota dynamics as a postmortem investigation tool. They stated right there, and they show that. They quote somebody from 2003, determination of the fungal groups to help establish the time of death. That was back in 2003. Well, the point I'm also trying to point with this is that's before David's death. They'd yeah. already been looking at forensic mycology well before he died. Yeah, a decade you know, and, more, more than a decade, yeah. Right, and if you consider how much we're advancing now in a lot of this type of technology, a year, you can easily be outdated within a year. It's not like yeah. a computer, like, you know, a month later, all of a sudden now there's a new computer that outdates this one completely. Um, <clears throat> but it's, you know, within a year, you can easily have enough data to go and show all sorts of other things to go and prove something wrong or to further prove something. Well, you've got a decade on him right here, you know, this is, that's a lot of time. They're going to be pretty well established in their field. Mm -hmm. um, and then next one we got is the forensic mycology current perspectives. And it, uh, what they say in the abstract is uh, determination of postmortem intervals from mold growth on corpse or corpses and providing trace evidence linking people and objects to places. Um, and that's, I really wanted to have that part highlighted too, because they can trace people, you know, they can take, they can link, this person to this place real easy um, just based on the type of mold you know so that's what it's that's why I'd say it's pretty important we need to go and determine what type of mold was on the body uh, and that makes sense even though the mold for I think for the most part with these was inside the body but th that still makes sense and again I, I just this just kind of went over my head because when I was in the sense that while reading the autopsy reports you know you would expect to see mold at some certain stage. So for me, it was it never triggered a bell. But you looked at it and said, "Hey, uh, kind of hold on, wait a second. Um, should we really be seeing this if we only in two people and not in all three? And that's really why I wanted you to to present this because I didn't even stop to think about that. I mean, I just took it as normal part of decomp. But yet, the what you're pointing out is a very valid question, right. and. Uh, also, they, they determine, like, with microbes in water. That's how they can find out if it's fresh water, salt water, sea water. If someone drowns, they can pretty much figure out where they where they drown at. Precisely. So it seems to me like it's kind of the same type of um, process of elimination. Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, is when it comes down to this, I would say for the most part, it's, I mean... For the most part, it's it's, rel it's relatively the same. Um, there's going to be parts too that are going to be a little bit different, but I mean, it's strictly it's just a little different. It's pretty much the same type of process of elimination, um, and that's why it's like I've got it narrowed down to about three different species I believe this could be, um, and two of them I can really pronounce, but it's like two Penicillium type species, and then with the other ones, Aspergillus um, candida or candida. That's what. Let me bring it up real quick. I don't remember exactly what it is. Yeah, you have it right there. It's Aspergillus, Penicillin, and Candida. Candida, that's right. Yeah, Candida alicinus. That's what it was. Okay. Candida alicinus. Um, and that's uh, one that's it's primarily white, but it can have a greenish color to it as well. Um, and a lot of these, uh, they can come in multiple different colors, which is the really interesting thing. But that also is determined by, well, where was it grown? Uh, you could even look at things like what, um, what process, or not what process, but... Um, what, at what point of decomp is this in? Is this early stage or is this later stage? Then the color can be an indicator. Then you've also got what species it could be. It's going to be an indicator as well. Um, there's like two of these reports actually go in depth about color and species. Um, the one they did was in, I think it was Argentina or Venezuela, something like that. It was South America. They talked about it and they were just pulling corpses from, I believe it was uh, cemeteries, if I'm not mistaken, which is kind of like, ah, uh, that's kind of wrong, but okay, I'll go with it. You got a report you already done, well, I'll read it. Um, but they were talking about like the different um, the different points of decomp. So you're looking at like, are they in the skeletonization phase? Are they bloating? You know, what at what point? And they found there was different species that actually lived in, that actually thrived at these certain points. 
So there's and it, there's even points where it almost seems like there's a species that'll get on there, it'll be really really relevant, and then all of a sudden now it becomes either completely kicked off of it or it's just kind of reduced its size because well you got another mold that's growing. And that's, that makes uh, sense because as right. the body's decomposing, the medium in which the mold is growing is changing. So right. it may favor one environment, but it's not going to favor this next one. So then the next type will then take over. Makes sense to right. me. Right. And so it's it's rather interesting seeing that too. So if you know what process or what point they are in the decomp process, then you can kind of determine which ones it could be. And we know they were roughly in the bloating phase right there. So it's we're just we're looking, starting. Just starting. Yeah. So we're looking at we're looking at bloating is what we're looking at then. And it's because we're looking at bloating, we see how much is there. I mean from what I from what I could see on the bodies when I when I looked, it did look like Renee was the only one that actually had anything that we could see on the bodies. I know they didn't mention the autopsy report, but that's the part I'm still looking at. I'm like this this seems to match what they're talking about here. Um, it's a little bit above the area where they were doing the um, where they actually said the the, um, the mold growth was. So um, I did send you one. I redacted that one that one on purpose because they, there's a bunch of photos of a body, but they go over in detail about the mold and all this. But you can actually see on the inside, and that's it's it's pretty gnarly to look at. But it's it's really interesting to see at the same time on how it grows inside the body. Um, so I wish they would have included you know like measurements and things like this. Well, how large are these cultures you're finding here? Um, but they didn't include anything like that, which is really, really unfortunate. So, um, but yeah, they just basically just this slide here just basically say yes, it is used. It's the big thing here. Take away. Uh, and then next, of course, because we brought up the autopsy, we've got David and Renia's. They're the only autopsy reports we actually have that actually show there is mold, but it's post post mortem mold growth, um, and in case of Renia, mold like growth. Um, and they talk about where it was found, which is the liver and biliary system. So, but I also wanted to go and, um, if you don't mind, I want to give a little perspective on this as well. This is a slide. I, this is an actual case they used um, uh, during this uh, the forensic mycology current perspectives report I found. So, um, but it says a young woman was found in a flat in West Yorkshire in, uh, in January 1996. Uh, the forensic pathologist noted that there was some mummification and skin slippage, and it was necessary to determine how long the woman had been dead before her body had, was discovered. There was bluish green and gray mold colonies present, and that's the thing they can determine a lot just by color. Mm -hmm. It's also really interesting with that. But um, uh, and the West Yorkshire Police Support Service took swabs from these, and then measured the sizes of the bluish green colonies. Then over a period of 28 days, the experienced medical mycologist studied the, the growth rates of the fungi on two artificial media at a temperature similar to those where the body was found, which is at 4 degrees Celsius, and at room temperature, which is around 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. After comparing the growth rates, the mycologist concluded that the death occurred a minimum of three to four weeks prior to, uh, to uh, January 16, 1996, when the area of growth on the right cheek was measured. Um, now, I'm not saying that's necessarily when, you know, how long David and Camilla and, and Renee had all been killed, but it's interesting because they can narrow time down pretty to a pretty good amount of time. I mean, yeah, that's still three to four weeks, but end of the day, they can get it down pretty close. I believe it's within about 48 hours, I believe. Um, they can get it down to, or maybe it's 45 minutes, something like that, but they get it down pretty, pretty close to when the deaths occurred. So, but it just depends on the growth rates. Well, we know they didn't do anything with the mold. They just basically just stated, oh, there's mold. To me, that's that's really weird. Why wouldn't they do anything? And that's the question I've got, even for the, the AVPD and all this. Why didn't they, um, you know, get any um, samples for this and get them tested? Why? Because that could easily go and narrow down time of death. You got no entomology there. There's no blood pools. There's nothing there, so why not get something that's going to be solid ground, or at least semi-solid ground, rather than this like shaky swamp they're standing on, you know, with this case. So, <clears throat> all right, let's go on to the third one. And this this is what's interesting is they did the first test just to show this because when they're doing a lot of these types of tests, they like to go and show them in Celsius. I don't like Celsius. I like Fahrenheit. It's a lot easier yeah. for me to work with. 
So I converted. I'm going to go and see what it was like. I just want to point out, test two, it was supposed to be 21 to 24 degrees Celsius. So this is like 69 degrees and up. But roughly, it's going to be around the same body temperature, or the same temperature. So, but you got test one, four degrees Celsius. That's 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit, where that, uh, for that, when that body was found. Then you get test two, and they're finding it's around the 69 to 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, what do we got? The it's a little close to the Crowley residence thermostat. So my question is, is why? Why? Why does this temperature? Why does it matter? Well, it's because of mold growth. Pretty obvious that one, but. This test, it shows that. It's around that same temperature, and they're finding these samples here based on this and all this, that they can basically conclude, you know, the, the answer here. And the great thing to note from this is, from that same report, this work contributed to a man being convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. So whoever did this, well, they, this should concern them right now. Is now we've got this we can go off of. Can we necessarily use this in court? Well, we can all we can say is really they uh, they didn't do this and they should have and they suck because they didn't do this. But right. end of the day, we can we can technically get a measurement on if that's assuming that on the body the the white blotches that we see on the the body of Rania, um, if those are indeed mold, which they do appear to be. I mean, we might disagree on that. I don't know, but um, it, it's one of those things that if that is indeed mold, we can get a measurement on that. We can still measure it, and we can actually see, okay, well, how big is it? And then we can just go and there's studies out there. I'm sure we can go get a report and see, okay, at this degree, or we can even call somebody at this degree, at what's the growth rate of this? You know, let's let's just define the conditions. What will be the growth rate? I'm sure somebody's done a study on it. You know, is mold going to grow more um, prominently when a dog is around, right? You know, you've got more bacteria. You've got more things that are going on in the environment. Is this going to affect it? Yeah, and also, you know, the, the main difference between Rania and uh, David and Kamel is that um, the area where it seems to be some white decomposition, mold, whatever, because the photo that I've seen, it just is not clear enough. But you can see there's something there. Mm -hmm. uh, was that, um, you know, enhanced because you have exposed tissue now compared to the other areas of the body where it's not exposed tissue. So, right. yeah, so, so there are a lot of variables here. But mm -hmm. uh, why are they called a mycologist? I think they would know that. And right. so why did not the AVPD take advantage of, of a mycologist and say, hey, you know, what's your, what's your take on this? Right. And it, it still bothers me. After I discovered all this, it just bothered the hell out of me. Because why haven't they, why didn't they use this? Yeah. You know, they had the tools at their disposal. You know, and I, and, you know, I know it all comes down to end of the day, there will be budget. It'll come down to, sure, but end of the day, they could have done this instead of just, let's go and collect all this evidence. You waste all this extra time and money just on collecting this evidence, not to test it. Right. Why didn't they just do this? You know, um, you know we know there's a ton of evidence they didn't even test. You know, they just test a few things here and there, and they test it for, you know, maybe one or two things at most. Which, yeah, that costs money, but, well, you didn't find anything, or you found uh, results that were just showing, okay, well, it could be a good chunk of the population here. Some might say it's not a good chunk, but if you look at that chunk, it's like, that matters. Mm -hmm. uh, because then you have to narrow down, okay, well, how much could match in that area? Well, then we got to look. Well, if it's got all three of their matches, well, now you've got David, Grenier, and Camille. If it matches all three to some degree, or all, or just Grenier and David, for instance, well, now you've got David's family. This is going to probably go and match with them, too. You know, if you've got another person's DNA in there, but it's not Camille's, well, then you don't include anybody that Camille could be related to in that area, potentially. Um, now you've got other things that are going to go in there. Okay, well, why does this match somebody else? You know. Yeah, and you know, that's the key wording in those reports that a lot of people are just, it just seems to fly over their head. It mm -hmm. says, you know, in the um, blood analysis reports, it states that it would not be expected to be found among unrelated individuals. It doesn't right. give you a percentage of among related right. individuals. So that leaves open both families. Right. And I'm not throwing, I'm not accusing, but I'm just saying this puts the families as possible contributors. 
Correct, correct. And that's that's a big thing. I I think you're 100% on that. People just overlooked. Yep. And they shouldn't be because end of the day, if you've got all three's DNA right there, couldn't you? Or well, well, even if you got David's and Grinia's, that means you can't exclude his family. Correct. Because you've got David's DNA. Well, couldn't Catherine's DNA be in there? Couldn't uh, Dan Senior, Dan Junior, Allison? Couldn't they be on there? Couldn't it go back farther? Yeah, it could because David's DNA. Um, so now you're including the whole. It's a pretty good portion. Um, uh, I would not say necessarily of, of his family, but you're going to include a, a decent amount of people in that, and then you've also got the people that aren't, that can't be, you know, that are not family. Well, now I've got questions. Is now we're going to be looking at population density of uh, Apple Valley, of just Minnesota, you know, things like this, of you know how much, how many people could this be in that area, and. Um, you know, you know. I just think there's just a lot of smoke and mirrors when it comes to this case, too, though. So, I agree. Um, so, um, but the big thing to really state about this is, yes, it is noteworthy. Um, and then we can um, determine two things with this. Um, we can determine the order of the deaths, which we know would have to be Rania, followed by David, and then ending with Kamel. Um, and then we've got the time of each death can be closely approximated um, based on growth data. It's not going to necessarily be 100% like this is when he died, but it'll be, or when she died or whatever, it'll be, you know, close, but it's not going to be 100%. So. And, but. you know, what you have there with the, the order of death, that's what how I saw it when I very mm -hmm. first um, started following this case. And I was basing that off of stomach contents and then the decomp rates in the autopsy mm -hmm. reports. Um, mm -hmm. David definitely died before Kamel did. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's just scientific proof. It's, it's in the autopsies. Right. Yeah, and as as we were saying earlier, the big thing people are saying they're following the science. Well, follow the science then. Yes, science has already proven this is correct right here. You know, Rania died, then David, and then Kamel. It's literally that order. Yeah, um, and you can't. I mean, and and this is the the thing. There are there hmm. there might be a lot of aspects in life that are not cut and dry, in right. black and white, but with the medical. It is a black, a pretty much black and white. A head is a head, an arm is an arm. You know, a bloat stage is not a, a skeletonization stage. An early decomp is not advanced decomp, which is what we see written in these police reports. Police go, oh yeah, they're advanced de in, in a state of advanced decomposition. No, they weren't. They were right. early. So right. when, which means they had just died not long before right. their bodies were found. And yet they, they let this narrative drive. However, what does the science, the science is telling you straight off the bat, these bodies are here, not for very long, and here's what order. Boom, boom, boom. Right, right. And one last thing I want to show that I didn't put in my slide here was through this, um, I already posted this one up. This is already in the slides. But the part I've got highlighted here, it's uh, though some species of fungi is penicillium, SPP and Aspergillus SPP are widespread. Colonization on the cadaver requires at least a period of at least three to seven days. So if it's a penicillium, we're looking at three to seven days prior. And that matches, that'll go along with uh, decomp of, uh, you know, the bloating stage right there. Yes, so and exactly right. with what the, um, the medical examiner was telling us. And I'm, I'm telling you, the minute he looked at that photo without stopping, uh, you know, because I only had just one <clears throat> photo that I ran off of a printer, okay? It was a poor quality photo and only the autopsies. So all I had, and I showed him the photo and I'm like, okay, how long do you think? And he goes, four to seven days. He goes, 10 days at most, but I'm telling you, four to seven days. Right. And all of the information we're finding and what you just found, so it's the same thing. Right. So, and like I said, if it, if it ends up being a penicillium, um, species, which that's that's what I'm leaning on right now, um, then we're looking, that's most likely what it is right here. So, with it, you know, and then we've got to just look at basically colonization, um, at what rate were they growing? And at 68 degrees, that's going to be at one of those temperature rates that it's just, just going off temperature, it's going to grow. You know, it's going to grow at a pretty decent rate, but it's not going to be like, you know, just full-blown, just let's just go and get moldy, right? You know, let's get super moldy. No, 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 no. It's, we're, we're talking, this is going to be something they're just going to be able to thrive. 
Yeah, you know. and you know, since you did this um, for for Greg's channel just recently, I went and I did some research, and the research I found states that this mold starts to grow and it's visible within 24 to 48 hours. Right. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. That's the thing. I, that's why I'm saying there's a lot with this. This this case is the narrative is just it's falling apart left and right. You know, I mean, I would definitely say it's already molded over. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that. <laughs> okay, one of my questions in your research, because um, I have like a, a few questions. One I think you might have already answered is: Did you find what kind of environments encourage the mold to grow within the body? So. A lot of it did come down to, um, from what I could find at least, a lot of it came down to really just temperature. Um, but there is like certain like environments like, um, like really, really dirty environments, like they're filthy, they're going to grow more. Why? Because, well, bacteria is going to be killing things, so there's going to be more, um, more decay. So there's more decay, you're going to probably get more mold. Did um, it um, sure. say anything about, and I'm just tossing this out there because I have no idea, but like if it's a moist environment versus a dry environment, did they say anything about that? It, it, it just depends on the species. Um, okay. Certain species, like if it is a penicillium, I believe that's more of a moist, a moister environment. Um, it could be like a, kind of like a room temperature moist environment, you know, which we would get from this type of a, um, this investigation right here. We're looking at there's going to be probably some humidity. Um, not to mention then you've also got the bodies and then, you know, they're going to be, you're going to get moisture from there as well. So, I mean, 68 degrees, I mean, it's decently warm. So penicillium would grow pretty fine. Um, I think it was penicillium and aspergillus. Could have been candida I was looking at. But the, and there are two different types that grow, though. Penicillium is going to be, um, that's not a yeast-based one. Right. Um, well, candida is a yeast-like yeah, mold. Yeah, it is yeast. Yeah. So, but penicillium is uh, it. It works differently. It grows a bit differently, <laughs> to say the yeah. least. So. I haven't done enough research on that yet. So, uh, but you, it's, it's interesting because um, you know the more all of us are, are covering these different aspects of the case, the more this case is coming together. It's like now a picture is coming into play. It doesn't seem so scattered anymore. Right. Um, and, um, and so I, I really think it's important because you, and, and I agree with, with your assessment, the, um, the, the, the people who die, it, the order of death, is what I'm trying to say, is so important because the evidence and the mold growth and then autopsies show that David died before Kamel. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are so many things that point to him not being the murderer, the killer, and right. him being a victim. And I think this is like another one. It's like a nail in their narrative, a nail in the coffin of their narrative. Mm -hmm. He could not have done this because he died before she did. Oh, and we can, we can do further than that. So we know there was the pack theory, right? Well, this shows that David didn't kill Kamel. Right. So if David didn't kill her, well, Kamel, even if she did it, she couldn't have killed herself. Why? She had like three gunshot wounds to the head. The autopsy says two, but you can see there's right. clearly yeah. three. Mm -hmm. um, so, and she didn't write in her own blood on the wall after she's dead. Right. I mean, who shoots himself in the face a few times and then, oh, I got to go and... Uh, yeah, I got to go and write uh, this in blood on the wall, you know. Oh, and I got to go and, you know, not to mention, I have to go take out the trash of all this, this stuff, you know, from, you know, just uh, doing all this right here. Got to take this out, make sure I'm alive still to, uh, you know, bring them back in and then just, you know, go and die on the floor, you know. Yeah. It's not normal. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like the more this stuff comes out, the, the narrative, I mean, it was weak to begin with. It, it was barely hanging on by a thread, but now it's like so, it's, it's just gone. Their narrative yeah. doesn't fit anything anymore. Just none yeah. of it. Yeah, we conducted some uh, some blood force trauma on this one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? We did. <laughs> we did. And, oh, gosh. I mean, it's been beaten senseless. So, I mean, we, we know the narrative is just false. Um, you know, I, my question is, is, you know, why would anybody keep beating the dead horse on this one? Not, you know, no pun intended, of course, but why, why would they keep beating on it and saying, oh, no, 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 the narrative is right. We could prove it wrong every which way. 
so why keep saying it's it's right when it's clearly not? And this is, um, like you stated, this is the science coming from them. We're, right. we're looking at what they provided and what they used, and when looking at their science, not an opinion, not a guess, but their science is telling everybody that it didn't happen the way they said it did. There was no snapping. There was no David went off the rails. And, you know, we have um, mold growth on two bodies, but not one. So that tells me the environment is probably different for David and Rania than it was for Kamel, at least for a while. Um, we see that according to their autopsies that um, the state of decomp is relatively consistent with David and Rania, but Kamel right. is a little bit different. So, I mean, right away... It, it, just by autopsies alone, Rania, because she still has undigested food, they, it, it, me, and, and what I'm thinking, and a little bit more, more mold growth, could it have been because she had exposed flesh? Could have been, but still, like, and that's so why I agree with you, Rania, David, and then Kamel. Right. Well, the other really interesting thing, too, to also consider about all that, and I know we spoke about it before, I just want to make sure I reiterate this, is these people, I mean, you can see what was going on. We've got a clear picture of what happened right before their, their untimely demise. They were in a comfortable scenario, right? They were in a comfortable situation with somebody they had to have known. Mm -hmm. The reason we know this is because, well, Renia was in her pajamas, okay? Me as a parent, I, I'm sure you're probably the same way. When it's bedtime, friends aren't coming over, right? Unless they're already there. But right. friends are not going to be there. You know, family is probably not. I mean, they might, well, family maybe, but, you know, I'm I'm very, very protective of my kids. I think most parents should be or they are, you know. And when it comes down to a bedtime, is like one of those things, like we're, you know, getting everybody to kind of calm down and then go to bed. Well, there was contents, food contents in her stomach, so which means she had just eaten, too, before her death. Then we got Kamel. There was food contents. She had just eaten before her death. Well, we can all look at the kitchen. What was going on there? It looks like they were just done cooking, probably yep. getting ready to go and put the dishes away. Well, we also see, and there's all sorts of different things we can paint a picture of, quite literally paint, um, <laughs> because we got to see, well, what else was going on in the trash? Right on top, there was hair dye. Well, now what do we see with um, uh, Camille's hair? Well, it looks like there was like two different colors there. You know, I ran it through multiple times on Photoshop, and we're seeing that, too. It's like, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, there, I mean, with hair, it's, I'm, I'm saying too different entirely, because you can, you're going to have that spectrum on there where it gets lighter or darker, sure. And you might even see where it shifts a little bit in color just due to light. Well, well it's too, a lot of women will add highlights to their hair, so you'll have two different colors. And right. so, yeah. But that being on top? Um, I was able to go and deduce directly which one it was. Mm -hmm. I could even tell you which brand and then what color and all this is. We got the box right there. We know where this came from. We got the, um, I believe even the paper was up on the counter, if I'm not mistaken. But but we know we got, there was all sorts of data right there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we we can paint that picture pretty clearly now of what was going on. Um, this situation, we know there was no forced entry. Therefore, anybody else that would have entered, they would have been let in. Wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, know. exactly. So this tells us that it was someone they knew. Right. It may be it someone, us. did they knock on the front door? Did they come to the back door? Oh, hey, you know, we're here. Can you let us in for a second? And, you know, in the middle of dishes, she's like, open the door, what's going on? And then, you know, they could, and this is just a, a, a supposition, brandish a weapon and just say, okay, go get David. You know, and from that point, you're not going to be fighting. If if you come up the stairs, if he's if he's downstairs writing or in an office writing, he comes out and sees somebody with a gun to his wife's head. He's not going to be fighting him. You know what I mean? Right away, right. you've got him. Right, and whether this be a hostage-like situation, whether this be, um, you know, torture, we're not really sure exactly what exactly occurred, but. Um, when we're looking at this, I mean, it does appear that there was a situation, I would definitely say it's probably similar to that, um, at, the, at the very least, if not the exact, you know, because, like I said, we already know that they were, they were somebody they knew. Yeah. Um, they opened the door willingly, no problem. If this would have been somebody they didn't know, and they saw somebody like that pop up, David, chances are, would have went to the door. If, if somebody they didn't want in the house, 
David would have come to the door. Yes. Um, and we know this because, well, Kamel is, she's a mother. She's going to go and be there for her child to go and defend the child. She'll be that last line if she has to be. Um, you know, we know she was trained with a gun. Could she easily came to the door with a gun and was somebody she'd know? Yeah, easily. But she was probably out in the kitchen, probably busy either, you know, finishing up with her hair or she was finishing, you know, clean, she was getting started on cleaning up. She could have easily called the David. David came out. He didn't even have any socks or shoes on. He was comfortable. Yep. You know, this isn't somebody that was just outside, right? This isn't, so, no. <laughs> this was somebody that was, he was probably in his office or he could have been, um, you know, maybe he was downstairs. There were, he was doing something, though. He was comfortable, and he was either relaxing or he was doing something. I would probably argue. And you bring up a office. good point. Yeah, I mean, the scenario just, it just, it flows with what the evidence is telling us. They had, Rania and Kamel had eaten, and um, David was in a, in a different room. They were already comfortable. They're get, Rania's getting ready for bed. She has her pajamas on. Kamel's doing the housework. David is off writing, and he'll eat when he gets done, you know, right. because as writers, they don't always, you, you get to, you're busy until you're not busy and you right. eat when you're finished. You don't right. sit, take time and go, okay, dinner time, let me come out and eat. No, 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 you'll eat after you're done writing for the day or whatever the case may be. So yeah, they're, they're like a family that's getting ready for their regular nighttime routine mm -hmm. and somehow that gets interrupted by somebody they knew. Right. And like I said, you know, this all goes back to this right here with mold, because now we can conclude a few things about what exactly, you know, time of death. Mm -hmm. So, because now we know David was killed after Rania, and the, and he was killed before Kamel, he couldn't have done this. So it right. had to have been somebody else. So, <clears throat> so it blows away the pack theory, and it blows away the current narrative. So... What happened then exactly? I would love the AVP to answer that because I know they can't answer it correctly because they're still going with that crap narrative. Yeah, agreed. And I just wish they would talk. And, and it just seems like they all just would rather stay silent than help the public understand what really yeah. went down. And is it because they don't care? Is it because they they made a, a huge screw up? And, well, we see where they screwed up all over the place. And are they just covering yeah. their asses? You know, yeah. and so they'll stay silent so the public doesn't know how badly they screwed up on this one. What, or do they have some a different idea and they're just keeping their mouth shut and waiting until we don't know? Right. I think that's 100% right there. So hopefully we'll get some answers, but I think it's fair to assume they're probably going to go and just keep covering their butts on this because. Well, they're wrong, so. You know, <laughs> yeah, always, right. Oh, and I went through my notes, and you did answer my other two questions um, during this one, and one of them is, okay, the environment that the mold grows, how long does it take for the mold um, growth to begin, and then according to how long could the bodies have been lying there, which you already talked about, and, mm -hmm. and you answered all of that. Um, is there anything else you wanted to add? I know this is going to be a little bit short, um, for, but... It, I just really felt this was super important and, and you know. Oh, that, I mean, that basically covers everything I've got. Um, I do appreciate you um, you know, bringing me on tonight. I totally appreciate that. Well, thank you for coming on. And, and I hope you guys out there on YouTube and those who are following us, I hope you guys, if you have questions, please write them down. If you have a comment, you have a thought, um, leave it down below in the comment section. Um, we're finding that Oftentimes, sometimes just the most basic of thought or what you think is the basic, oh, okay, that just kind of struck me as odd, oftentimes leads us down a really good path because if William hadn't, if this hadn't struck him the way it did, we wouldn't have been putting this together or we probably would have, but it would have been farther on down the road. But because William followed up with, well, okay, well, hmm, this, this is kind of weird. Let me look into this. Mm -hmm. Now we now have more proof, scientific proof that right. David died before Kamel. Yeah, we're just following the science. So hopefully some other people do the same. <laughs> okay, um, William, when you want to tell everybody your channels and before we sign off so they know where they can find you? Uh, yeah, um, you can find me on YouTube. You can look up, uh, you can look me up by William Rail on YouTube. Um, you can always find me at Strange Investigations on there as well. Um, on Rumble, Odyssey, and... Bit shoot. It's all strange investigations. You can just take a look for straight, strange investigations. You'll find me. And then on Twitch, it's uh, twitch.tv backslash strange investigations. 
Okay, and um, I'll get those links from you and I'll put them down below in the description box as well. And so you guys definitely check out William's channel. He covers a lot of different stuff. It's interesting and oftentimes um, he'll do live streams on Twitch, not just gaming, but he'll do cases. And I've jumped on there once before and, you know, he will answer your questions live as he's doing the stream. And so um, definitely check him out. And thank you guys for joining us today. And again, if you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts, please post them below. And we will see you next time.